Hey folks, John Thompson, Spring Framework Guru here. So today I'm working on content for my Spring Core DevOps course. In this course, it's all about deploying Spring applications up into the cloud. And one of the tasks that we're doing is we're setting up a database that we're going to be connecting to. So I've decided to use MySQL, very common a database, but I'm throwing a little wrinkle into the course and I want to do it in a Docker container. And any of the major cloud vendors out there, uh, Amazon, Azure, or uh, Google, you, you can get a, a Linux instance, Red Hat, or CentOS, spool that up, and usually MySQL isn't installed by default, but you can run MySQL in a container, a Docker container. So what I'm going to do in this segment is show you how to set up a Docker container and run MySQL within that Docker container and get that up in the cloud. And I'm going to be using Amazon AWS. I've already got a, a server provisioned. I use the latest uh, Red Hat release. It's running on a micro instance. And I'm, I'm going to jump in at that point. I don't think I need to show you how to provision a server on Amazon AWS. So I'm going to jump in at that point. What we're going to do in, in this video is we'll go through, we'll install Docker, get that up and running, and then we'll set up MySQL and get that cooking as well and show you how, how to connect to MySQL and make sure that the MySQL database is up. And now later in the course, we'll be taking a Spring Boot application and connecting to that database. But in this video, we're just going to be focusing on getting a, a database set up. And what I'm emulating in the course is setting up a production database that we'd be using to serve like a, a website or something and have that, that MySQL database backing up the Spring Boot web application. Okay, I have signed in to my instance. It's a Red Hat instance running on Amazon EC2. And I'm going to be following along with the installation directions for Docker directly from Docker's website. And the first step they want us to do is a sudo yum update. So the images aren't going to be current on everything. So the yum update is going to update things for us and get the, the packages all updated. And the, the command is going to ask me if it, that pack size is okay, 126 meg. I'm going to say yes. And now that's going to go out and start doing its thing downloading the, the various packages from the various RPM repos. And we, we can see that things are getting installed and we have 170 updates to do. Now, one, one disclaimer as this is processing, Docker is fairly, fairly new. It's only about two years old and it, it is a, a rapidly evolving space. So the directions that I am going through right now are current for docker 1.12 and it, and six months from now after this video is recorded uh, some things could change absolutely could change because this is a, a fairly fairly new and evolving area of technology but i've been working with docker for a while and i, I really like it a lot of it reminds me of uh, when we originally got vms coming out and docker really makes a lot of sense as to how docker manages things and allows you to do containers within the operating system. Now, if you're coming from a Windows background, at the time of recording, Docker is not supported on Windows natively. You can pull up a virtual machine using VirtualBox is a very common way to do it on Windows platforms. Uh, but within the VirtualBox, you're running a flavor of Linux to invoke Docker and run Docker containers on your Windows machine. Now, interestingly enough, Microsoft has pledged support for Docker and that we should be seeing Docker containers natively on Microsoft operating systems, which should be interesting. I'm kind of curious how they're going to pull that off because uh, the Windows operating systems and Linux operating systems are significantly different in how they approach things. So next up, we'll be running a command to add a yum repo. And that repository is where the Docker binaries reside for the the Docker RPM images that, of the stuff that we need to install. See the package updates cleaning up and nearly complete at this point. And I've gone over to the Docker web page and copied over the command to add in that yum repository. So as soon as this is done, we'll be able to get that going. Okay, we are now done. And I'm going to paste in the command directly off the Docker website. And this is adding a, a repository for us. And that goes by really quick. And the next thing we need to do is run the command. We need to run the command sudo yum install docker engine. It's 
going to ask me if it checks it out. It says it's 80 meg. Yes, go ahead and install it. And it's going to go install. Yes, okay. And we're going through and, and installing the Docker engine at this time. And this will bring down the binaries from, from Docker and installing them on this Linux image. And this, this portion is going to run a lot quicker. That is done. Now the binaries are installed. We need to set things up so that it actually runs. So we need to do sudo system control enable docker service. And this just creates a, a sim link for us. Now the next step is we enable the service but it's not running. So what we do is a system control And this starts up the, the Docker daemon. And now what, what I can do, if you're not familiar with Linux, you can do a clear, and that clears the screen. I'm gonna do a PS minus EF and grep for Docker. If you're not familiar with Linux, PS minus EF lists out the processes, and I'm using grep to search through for the string of Docker. And we can see the top line there, we have a process, process ID 4952, that's the, the bin docker, that's the command. And then we can see that it's got a child process on the second line, 4955, and see how the process is ID, and the second or third column there is 4952, saying that's a child process of the first one, and that's our docker daemon actually running. And so he's up, running, happy. And then the, the last line is actually my bash shell doing the grep. And so we saw the, the docker on that. So Docker is up and running. Let's clear that. And what we're going to do now is run hello world. So what we can do is sudo docker dash dash rm for remove. That's going to clean up after we run this. And we're going to do a hello world. And I need to do actually run r minus 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 rm, so that was my mistake. And now we can see right at the top there, it says download a newer image for hello world colon latest, and the colon latest is a tag. So hello world is the name of the Docker image that we want to fetch, and that got fetched from Docker, the, the public Docker repository by default, and we grabbed the latest tag. And we got this little hello world, so everything's good. And I think it scroll up, is there a little bit more there? No. So yeah, yeah, we can see unable to find image, hello world locally, and it's pulling it from the library. So that actually scrolled off the screen. So if I do this again, we can see now that that chatter about pulling down the Docker image isn't there. And that, that's because it, this kind of works like Maven where the Docker, Docker images get down, downloaded to the local machine. And once they're there, we don't need to pull them down again. So kind of a, an efficiency thing within Docker. So let's clear that and let's get MySQL installed. I'm going to toggle over here to IntelliJ and this is out of my class and what we want to look at is line 9 here. I'm going to separate the comment there. So this is the Docker command that we're going to run and I want to make this, uh, we'll call this prod SQL. So just to go through this command, if you're not familiar with Docker, what we're doing is docker run minus D, and the minus D says to run it in the background as a daemon process. And we're giving it a dash dash name and a string value, and so this will show up as prod MySQL. Now the minus P is for port mappings. By default, MySQL runs on 3306, so we want to map port 3306 to port 3306. So it's important to remember that the container is like its own little self-enclosed environment, very similar to VM. And what we're doing is setting up the mapping of the port inside the container to the host. So we're set, telling Docker, expose the host network port 3306 to the container port 3306. And these could be different if you need them to be. But one is external and that the first one's the host, the second one is the container. And then line 12, this is uh, how we map storage. And for our purposes here, varlib MySQL is just fine. I didn't need to change anything. So that, again, that's host slash container. So my var mylib MySQL colon 
to varlib MySQL inside of the container. So, and then we have a environment, and that's what the minus e is. And this is unique to my MySQL, and I'm signing the password to Tiger. And bonus points can to anyone who can say where I got Tiger from. And then the last line is the Docker image that I want. Again, we're going to be pulling from the, the public Docker hub, and we're doing MySQL slash MySQL server and tag. We actually want this to be latest. So this will pull down the, the latest. And what I can do, if you're not familiar with Bash, we actually need slashes here. If you're not familiar with Bash, a backslash says continue the command on the next line. And I'm, I could put this all on one line, but I'm just doing it for readability as we, we step thing, through things here. So I'm going to copy this over and tab back over to my terminal. And let's paste this. And yeah, I got an error there. And I, I'm a little dyslexic on my tags today. So these are forward slashes and need to be backslashes. Kind of a dumb mistake on my part. Rookie, rookie move. But sometimes we uh, we all make mistakes, right? So let's come over here and I expect we'll get much better results this time. And cannot connect to Docker Demon. Now something that is important is to run this with sudo. Another uh, minor mistake there, but you know, let you see some of the things there. So my user ID on this system is not set up to run against Docker. You need to join a couple groups on that. So I am running, you can see I'm running as EC2-user. If I was running as root, it would run just fine, but the Docker daemon runs as root and you need to be added. If you add your user account to the group Docker, you're, you're good to go. So we, we got this downloaded and let's to uh, sudo backer ps and now we can see that we are up and running so we now have mysql running inside a docker container and that is exposed to port 3306 okay at this point we now have mysql running inside a docker container on a linux image up on aws and by default, port 3306 is not going to be exposed to the outside world, so you'd have to go in and update your security group to allow traffic to come into that. And that's something I'll be showing my students how to do in my class, because for the purpose of what we're doing, we do want that exposed to the outside world so we can connect to it, allow our application to connect to it as well, and get into the MySQL database. Now, I'm not going to be Restricting it anyways, you can do IP restrictions, which is a, a really good security practice to do, but I'm not going to be doing that for the purposes of my class. And now in my, my class on Spring DevOps, we'll be able to start utilizing this database for our purposes.